Clay Patton on the Rural Radio Network. We're here at the 2023 Nebraska Farm Bureau Annual Meeting. And, of course, there's always one very special award at the ending banquet when it comes to the closing night, and that is the Silver Eagle Award. Ellen Hellerick is, one. well, A, was the founder of Ag in the Classroom here in Nebraska, but she is also this year this year's Silver Eagle recipient. And, Ellen, if you could, kind of tell us from, from the beginning, almost 30 years ago, Ag in the Classroom came to Nebraska. Tell us how you got it started here. I was contacted by a neighbor and said they were looking for someone to be the coordinator for this new program called Agriculture in the Classroom. And I said, well, what does it entail? And she said, I don't know, you'll have to do the interview. So I called the person and I interviewed with Ozzie Gilbertson and Stan Garbutz. And I took some things with me to show what I had done because I had taught in the, in the classroom. And so I went through the interview, answered their questions, and they said, well, well, we'll let you know. So I went home and I thought, well, did that go okay? Or, you know, you're always wondering how your interview went. And so I was home probably about 20 minutes and my phone rang and they said, you have the job if you want it. The position is yours. That is amazing, and I mean, just had that impression from the first point. Uh, but with that, you had a little bit of background about teaching agriculture in the classroom. And we think 30 years ago, there was still a disconnect between modern-day production agriculture and some of the kids in the classroom. What, what was your drive, even before Ag in the Classroom, to get in and teach kids about agriculture? Well, because I've lived on a farm all my life. Uh, I grew up on a farm, and I married a farmer, Gary is my husband and we've lived on our place for a long time too so I've been involved and I've been around other people and they just didn't understand uh, what agriculture was all about there was so many misconceptions and as time went on there was more misconceptions about what we were doing in agriculture as far as the environment and this and these kinds of things so when this job became available in this position and I found out, well, I was supposed to promote agriculture, and I thought, well, that might be a perfect fit for me, because that's been my life. It sounds like it was a perfect fit course as soon as they called you back as well after that initial interview. really kind of showed how good of a fit you were for it. So talk to us, 30 years, you've got to see, A, help a lot of folks coordinate and get into the classroom, but you yourself were able to continue working with the general public, with kids. Has there any aha moments when the light bulb clicked on for somebody that they really made that connection to production agriculture or, or any, any big highlighting moments over those 30 years that, that you really thought were special? Well... I think, since I'm originally a teacher, it would be something that came from a student. And I'm going to include that in my presentation tonight. And this just happened a couple, well, it was before school was out. And Gary and I have been egg pen pals for a long time. And so I was in a classroom, and the teacher said one of the students from last year's class would like to come in and see you. And I said, oh, that's great. And he has something to show you. And I said, well, wonderful. So he came into the classroom and he was carrying a plastic bag and it had some soybeans in it. And he came up to me and I said, oh, you brought soybeans to show me. And he said, yes. And I said, how did you get so many soybeans? And he said, well, remember last year when you came to our class and we planted a soybean in a, in a little cup? And he said, I took it home and it sprouted. And he was so surprised. And he said, my parents let me plant it in the garden. And he said, it grew and grew. And then I saw pods. And then they started turning brown. And he said, I harvested it. And these are the soybeans that I got from that one seed. If that doesn't, if that doesn't cement all, all those years of hard work and everything in one moment, oh, that's such a wonderful story. And thank you so much for sharing it with us as well. What does it mean to be honored here by Nebraska Farm Bureau with one of their highest distinctions for those who have been an advocate for agriculture? It's unreal to me. I'm, I'm usually able to talk when, so, when somebody comes up to me. When I got a call from Mark, I was talking to him on the phone, and finally he said, well, I'm calling because you have been selected for receiving this Silver Eagle Award. And there was silence. I just I couldn't believe that I was chosen, and I am so honored, but I'm also 
think of the people that they've had before, before me. I was just speechless. That is awesome. Well, and congratulations and honor well served. Nearly 30 years, ag in the classroom, being the coordinator, being a person on the front lines, being that story for agriculture. Ellen, thank you for all your hard work and advocacy that you've done for agriculture. Before I let you go, final closing thoughts, important information you think our folks need to know. Well, one of the things that maybe everyone doesn't know uh, is that there is an ag in the classroom coordinator in every state. It actually started in the 70s, and it came from U.S. Department of Agriculture and also American Farm Bureau. Those people got together and discussed how do we, how do we promote agriculture. And this was one of the ways that they decided that they would bring forward that. And so in Nebraska, it started with uh, the UNL and also uh, Farm Bureau. That again is Ellen Hellernick. She is your Silver Eagle Award winner here for the 2023 Nebraska Farm Bureau. As we close out convention, you're listening to the Rural Radio Network.